Today I am delighted to be here with Lorraine Alanson, the fracking queen in her beautiful home in North Yorkshire. So Lorraine, thank you for having us. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you. And your beautiful home, you haven't been here that long. Have no, you? I've only been here two months. <laughs> no, that's right. So you're the fracking queen. Why are you known as the fracking queen? What, how did this all start? Because in 2013, you were minding your own business. You had a very successful um, homestead, farm and cottages, bed and breakfast, and then suddenly something changed and you got involved with the whole fracking scene. That's what right. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, in 2013, a local gas company, uh, because I will say we live in a gas field in the Vale of Pickering, and there's been gas works here for decades, and they'd started, they'd drilled a well at Kirby Mispitten, right. the KM8 well, and they drilled it, and then they decided they wanted to actually try and develop it for shale gas. Right. And that was sort of 2013 and then the start of 2014 and that's when I became involved because I had this business that was very rural. It was an isolated farm that I lived on but we did holiday accommodation etc. And I thought to have the opportunity to um, develop gas in our area because we already knew there was several well pads and you don't know they're there, they're screened by trees and things. Yeah. I thought that could develop. Unlike renewables. Yeah, unlike renewables. Yeah, we'll talk about that yeah. later, yeah. But uh, I thought that it's a discreet industry. All right, you get traffic initially when they set them up, but yeah. then they run for, you know, decades silently really with yeah. only just maintenance vehicles going you see so I thought well, what a good industry to have in our area to help the rural economy because when you're in a rural area mm -hmm. you have few opportunities for businesses yeah. other than tourism and farming and yeah. I thought actually the gas industry would use the same um, businesses and companies that um, tourism would do as in accommodation and they'd need food and entertainment and all that you see and I thought this would be brilliant be for our brilliant. area. Another stream to the area's boat. That's so right it speak. would bring a lot of income in and you've got to remember in an area like this the youngsters move away. Yeah. They migrate out of the area to, to go and get other jobs elsewhere because there's nothing much for them here. The jobs here tend to be part-time, seasonal and basic salary. A bit like Blackpool. I've been in Blackpool while I've been up here, and you know, if the pads had been allowed to be developed, the uh, you know the shale gas ex extraction, they would have had jobs all year round, That's not just right. for six months. So, as you say, it's the same for Blackpool as it would be for the rural economy. Absolutely. As well. Yeah. And the and and the thing that really got me hooked into this was I found out that the Boland Shale sits right across the north of England, and the Boland Shale is the rock that this gas is in. It's the same gas as uh, gas that they extract from higher up in the earth, but it's deeper down, it's trapped in the shale rock. Yeah. So and I thought, goodness me, that's right across the north of England. What does the north of England need? It needs jobs, it needs um, enterprise and a Leveling thriving... up. Yeah. They're always talking about leveling, leveling up, up, aren't Absolutely. they? What better way of doing it? Yes. Yeah. That's, so I was buzzing about this. Yeah. And suddenly we found that there was a protest movement started. You got all these anti-fracking groups, frack-free groups, um, but they weren't local, were no, they? No, they weren't. Tell, tell our viewers a little bit about that. Well, what I discovered was when you looked into these frack-free organisations, particularly in our area, was they were formed by people living in London. Right. They might have had loose links to the area, but they were living in London. Right. And also other people, like sort of from Oxford area, and they would set up the websites. And all the time they're saying that this is... Um, Oh, and I've forgotten. Grassroots. Grassroots. Yeah. All the time they were saying this was a grassroots movement. Yeah. And it, I was annoyed because when you looked into it deeply, they weren't. No. And they were backed by organisations like Friends of the Earth okay. and Greenpeace. Big money. Big money. Big money. Big mouths. Yeah. And they were claiming to be like the little people fighting the big gas companies. And yeah. what I found was it was these big um, non-governmental organisations, Greenpeace, Frat Free, uh, sorry, Friends of the Earth, yeah. that were, they were the big money. Yeah. And people like me who were in favour it were being crushed because they would do anything to silen silence voices that were in favour of shale gas. Even handing out leaflets to little kids, straight to the kids outside Absolutely. schools. Absolutely. Outside Pickering Junior School, yeah. they stood outside one day and they didn't hand the leaflets to the parents, no. they handed them to the five-year-olds. That's very sinister, isn't it? It, it, it was absolutely, there were so many sinister things went on, but of course they always paint themselves as being very so, angelic. So what happened? You started to become publicly very supportive. Absolutely. And then, it, and then and all 
the dark stuff started it happening. Did because, what did you personally experience? Well, as soon as it became the Times newspaper ran a story on me setting up a group in favour because it was unusual. Right. And most people are scared off from doing that because of how aggressive the anti-fracking movement is. I can't imagine is. anything scaring you, Lorraine. <laughs> I want to be on your side in a fight. <laughs> so, so what happened? So they ran the story. So they ran this story and straight away I received horrendous threats online that they knew where I lived, they were going to come Personal and get threats. me. Personal oh, yes. threats? Death threats? Yes, they were going straight to come away. And, yes, they were going to come and okay, get me. Right. And, and I was absolutely mortified at that time. So this time. is the be kind lot? No, oh, yes, this is the be kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, death threats, nice. I yeah. was really mortified because I thought I'd, I'd lived a very ordinary life, a quiet life, I'd never had... Um, uh, any aggression off other people and suddenly I was uh, you know the target of some awful abuse yeah. and it went on for a long time and I still get abuse now at times and when I was running my holiday complex business which I have mm. actually now sold and um, left but um, even up to the earlier this not this year but last year 2022 yeah. I had people go and give me bad reviews uh, <laughs> online, who had never stayed here, there were anti-frackers who were trying to destroy my business. Yeah. It was really difficult and very unfair. It is unfair. Um, I was with the owner of Filed Football Club the other day, and, and I know that they experienced lots of bad reviews and terrible things written about them, and other local businesses in the area. Any local business that supported fracking would be targeted. Absolutely. And he got a lot of abuse. Yes, the same thing happened at Pickering Football Club, actually. Right. Third Energy, the company that wanted to do the shale gas here, the fracking, mm -hmm. they wanted to sponsor, and they had done previously, the football club at Pickering. There was such an uproar, they had to step back from that. So the football club didn't get the sponsorship money. You know, they denied that that would have benefited the community. Because, of the because the aunties, frackers, go mad. And any company... They'll do anything as they, well, they? They will stop at nothing they, um, they put pornography onto my web, onto my... Um, Didn't you have an issue with the internet provider or something? Yes, yeah. the, the people, it was a local company that provided my broadband because I can't get it through BT and people like that. Right. Not to the speeds and everything I needed for a business. Yeah. And so that company, they were uh, big players in the anti-fracking community, but we'd worked fine but never yeah. spoken about it. Right, okay. And then at the precise time that I was speaking in favour of the planning application at North Yorkshire County Council, they drafted an email, they sent it the next day, but the time of the draft was, was on it. Was while you were speaking at the council? Absolutely. Right, okay. To, to say they were cutting me off in seven days. For what reason? Well, they said that I'd used it to abuse people. You'd used it to abuse people? It was hilarious, really. And, and the email they actually sent as a copy was, it was so funny because it was a, uh, you supply Lorraine Allenson and she's anti-fracking. She's fracking in favour of yeah, fracking. Yeah. And, and then he turned around and said that it had nothing to do with fracking why he'd cut me off. It was a complete and utter farce. So it was a, an extraordinary coincidence. Oh, absolutely. Didn't you have your, uh, photographs of your nieces and nephews yes. got online? And they're, they're small children. They were small children at the yeah. time. They were in the bath and they were put online um, and it was passed right round the country and they were very abusive underneath it were the comments from the anti-fracking community. Really? And I actually went on and I said, take them down, your argument is not with children. If no. you want an argument, have it with me. So they posted but they pictures didn't. of your, of your nieces yeah, and yeah. nephews. They had no right to do that. Well, not, not only did they have no right, it's extremely strange and, you know, the, it's extreme. the inference is this is what they look like. Yeah. If you want to target yeah, absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, oh, I no, was mortified. Awful. I was devastated, actually, when they did that. Yeah. Because I thought, well, how can they target children like that? Tell me about the guy that was very much in um, favour of the anti-fracking movement in your area, who now has fields full of renewable... Uh, well, there's a family... That's a bit dodgy, isn't it? There's yeah. a family that were very active in the anti-fracking movement in this area. There was father, I why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. father, son, and other son. And other son, <laughs> the second son, was actually a director of a renewables company who has now just submitted planning permission to cover hundreds of acres with solar panels just near here, near Moulton. So in the same area, he's wanting to cover the, the land with solar panels. And their argument against fracking was industrialisation, yeah, traffic and all that. Yeah, how does that work? So why are you so in favour of fracking then? Be and what do you say about, sorry, but how, what do you say about the arguments that it's unsafe? I mean, I know that, that they're completely 
untrue. But if somebody threw that at you, oh, you know, it's unsafe, blah, blah, blah. We say, don't... Where is it unsafe? How do you know it's unsafe? And because they'll throw sound bites at you, will people, but they cannot answer the question. I say, right, you tell me where it was unsafe. Yeah, in, oh, the in, States. in America, they'd say no. uh, uh, something happened. Well, what happened? Oh, poisoned water. Why was it poisoned water? And you'll find out it's things like they store wastewater in lagoons, in ponds, open ponds. And at that time, I mean, they've tightened up on their regulations yeah. now, but at that time, they could put any chemicals down the wells. They never could here. No, it was never like that. It was so tightly regulated, yes, it's unbelievable. Absolutely. But th that pond may have leaked a bit or something, and then it might have caused, it, uh, caused issues. There's been very few issues with poison well, you think water, about you, but it's nothing to do with how we were going to run the industry. Well, we can benefit from their years of experience. Exactly. And, and have the, the, the most regulated and the best fracking in the entire world. I mean, the gas that's available here is better quality, apparently, than even the gas in, in America. Well, they say it's very good here, and yeah. that there's lots of it, because people like to say, oh, there isn't much here. Mm. We How need do to they know that? Well, they don't. Nobody we really can't do knows. Any exploration at no, the moment. Nobody really knows until they do lots of sort of exploration wells to test it, and then we'll get a better idea. But all we can say is that the companies would not be investing millions of pounds if they didn't have a fair idea. Well, yes, that's right. Yeah, and the core I mean, samples they've taken They well. did invest hundreds of millions already Ready, and then it's been the government's been yes we'll do it no we won't I mean how can you ever expect any company to carry on investing when you've got a government that doesn't really know what it's doing but yeah. yet we're importing so much gas and it'll be fracked gas from America I know it's completely so, insane don't get me started on the wood pellets <laughs> coming over and being burnt in well, jacks they're bought, burnt in drafts in Yorkshire and they're brought over on the ships using diesel and then yeah. they're it, it, you really couldn't make it renewables, up renewables it's absolutely unreliable crazy. as Alex Epstein yeah. calls well, them well they, they all have their dirty secret and yeah. there is a big dirty secret with renewables because you've got children mining the minerals in the Congo you've got slave labour producing the solar panels in China you know um, it is a terrible situation and the the black and the, the idea of frack gas, but all these people are perfectly happy to use frack gas from America. Presumably, they reckoned in America it was badly done, but yet they'll still use frack gas from there. This whole and in, zero I just read right. from the Office of National Statistics that in 2021 we imported 19 billion pounds worth of gas. <laughs> Can you believe that? Now that money... Well, we've got it all under it's our It's under Are we so precious that we don't want to use our own gas? And what about... All we're getting, we're sending billions down a pipeline, we're getting the gas back, but we don't get the jobs, we don't get the tax revenue. They're all moaning about the NHS not having enough money. Well, we're not producing anything to make tax to, to fund such as the NHS and well, social care. No, you're absolutely right. And of course, the energy costs have gone through the roof and it's very fashionable to say Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. But actually, gas prices were up by 90% the year bef uh, in in the months before the year before the Ukraine war, it's nothing to do with that. And in America, they're paying eight times less for their electricity than we are. I know because I they frack. They frack. They're energy independent. They're net exporters now. You're all and the people say, oh, they don't like it in America. There'll always be a few people that don't like anything. It doesn't matter no, what you do. Yeah. They're always going to Can't object. Can't please everybody. But they get the voice, and people like me who was in favour of it, don't get the chance to have a voice in the same way and with the, such as the government. I mean, I look at some of these, what are the um, all-party parliamentary committees? Oh, and yeah. They'll discuss topics of interest. And you look at them sometimes and I think, where's the ordinary person on that that's speaking to that committee? Because you'll get Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth. Yeah. And you even get, like, the extremists from... Um, <laughs> Just stop oil extinction Just rebellion. Just stop oil yeah. extinction rebellion. Yeah. How could I forget? What do you think about net zero? I mean, it, it's mad. I isn't think it? it's a mad, mad scheme. Yeah. Because to and me, and disingenuous as well, oh, because it's not possible. It creates horrendous poverty. And, and the poor are going to really suffer, but other people are going to get suffered, dragged into well, poverty as well. Well, they're going to be well. bought, yeah, as you say, Absolutely. brought down. No, yeah, there'll the be rich, no middle class. No, the rich few at the top. They'll be fine, They'll it won't matter. Yeah. But everybody else is going to really suffer poverty. And for why? To me, the, the talk about climate change, all right, the climate changes. Mm. That, that naturally occurs. Yeah. Surely, if it's getting warmer, we should adapt. You know, all this trying to stop the climate, hold it in a perfect position. You'll never do that. There it's isn't... just an excuse to control us and take us back it, it to is. the feudal system. 1.5 degrees warmer in the last 150 years 
So what? You know, that's the difference between lunchtime and breakfast time in terms of the temperature. It's crazy. Because, it is. You know, the, the, they've made such a scare story out of it all. Instead of looking at it sensibly. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've just been reading a book about the history of this area of Rydale. And it's quite interesting because in it, it was written in the 80s. Uh, but it goes on about the Bronze Age and things, and then it says it, it got warmer and people could grow crops better. Oh, so yeah, but you, I, yeah, it, and then it, it gets colder in the you know the ice age, absolutely. the mini ice age. I was watching Simon Sharma, History of Britain. I, I love Simon Sharma, I'm, so I've watched it millions of times. But I was re-watching it the other day, and he talked just quite openly on the BBC about how. Um, you know, uh, 3,000 years ago, it was a lot warmer, yeah? And yeah. I thought, they wouldn't say that on the BBC now. No, they, they, wouldn't. they wouldn't say it. it just, I thought, oh, you wouldn't hear that. I mean, the documentary, I think, is about 20 years old, but you would not hear on a BBC documentary them talking about a warmer period. No, they wouldn't, now. but yet it has been. Yes, And of then course. it came cold. Cold is more of a problem than the heat. Of course it isn't is. Isn't it? People will die of the cold. 87 year old woman the other day, I don't know if you read about it, died of hypothermia in her own home. No, I didn't. Know. Yeah, it was in the Daily Mail. She um, she just couldn't afford to put the heating on. Can you imagine living your whole life, paying taxes, having lived through the war, and then um, and then you can't, and then you freeze to death in I, your own home? Absolutely, and they're terrified of putting the heating on because they've had it rammed down their throats about net zero and climate change. Well, they just can't afford they, it. No, they can't. Yeah. But also, in their minds, they're absolutely terrified of being frozen stiff. I know of an old chap near here and a friend found out that he he wasn't running his heating at all and he thought he was he, he offered to buy him uh you know fuel and he'd got fuel but he didn't use he his was gas worried about his, running out he was worried about it and having to fill up his gas tank again you know and i thought isn't that sad mm. because actually at the moment the government is giving people help even though it's rocketing but they don't need to if we had our own gas and if Absolutely. We were, they wouldn't need to how was all all the stuff that happened to you, did it take a toll on you personally? It did, it did. So uh, tell me about the timeline. So 2013, how long were you involved actively in the pro-fracking and dealing with well, all right the Well, right up to, right up to really, well, even up to, the last few months has been quieter since yeah. Richard Sunak got in and put a moratorium on it yeah, again. Okay. But really, I was active all the time with that. And it, it, it was very stressful because you're getting bombarded with hate mail and horrible things online but i think nowadays everybody gets up hey i don't mind on, if in. they criticize what i'm saying but if they criticize how i look they're blocked <laughs> yeah we see that's my rule and that's we see i rule. got a lot of that yeah, the way not, i look it's not very just nice because i'm not skinny you know then i think i think it is a, i think i think if everyone gets criticism oh it's online. terrible though yeah. you know and it, they shouldn't do and that. it shouldn't upset not, you but it and everyone says, oh, ignore it. But if you get 200 people slagging you off, it's well, not very nice, I have to tell nice, you, you end, up, you end up with a rhino skin. You know, <laughs> and you just ignore it and you think, stuff off, you know. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah, you maybe I need with... to be more like that. Yeah, you do. Ha you have to cope. It's not easy, though. It isn't easy. No. It takes its toll on you mentally. I know I, I ended up at the doctors feeling really so actually, depressed. So these activists put you in a place where you went and said, I went help. to the doctor. To yes, the doc I did. the doctor. That would be about... It would be 2016 after they cut my internet off and all that. Yeah, because you probably just felt oh, completely it's... under siege at that yeah, point. Yeah, I did. I had no broadband and you, and you couldn't easily get broadband to where I was. Yeah. And they're all saying, what's she moaning about can't get broadband? Because you go online and it says, it says BT can give you fabulous broadband. Oh, well, anyone broadband. who lives in London and think that everywhere is like London. It's like, you know, David Lammy, the MP the other day, said that oh, a white man that. man should take his, um, you know, his pain yeah, and his ladder or whatever on, on the train, on the underground. And he went, the LBC ran a thing, they got somebody to try and do that. Oh, do and they know. wouldn't let them take the pain on the underground. So, you know, <laughs> how does that? But it just shows you how glorious out of touch a, a huge amount of the people that are making these decisions are absolutely and they really really are aren't they yeah they are i, I, I saw that with david lamming i couldn't believe it i thought I they have no idea no. it's like they're wanting you to get rid of your cars yeah you can't what do you think about that oh i think it's stupid electric, an electric car. i can't cars. imagine you're an electric car lorraine never no never. not until it will do a thousand miles to a charge yeah then i might consider then you it. might think about it but how do they think that these cars are charged up in the first place where do they think the electricity comes from to charge them up and as you say about the minerals oh god I think the next thing that's being planned for me is Lois goes to the Congo. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. I think so too, because it's all right, oh, it's clean, green, and it's this wonderful dream. People need to there see it. There is a terrible toll being taken behind the scenes, just so you can get the wealthy in the West 
to virtue signal. I watched Greta Thunberg the other day yeah. leaving Davos, walking down the street, and she was being uh, interviewed, really, or asked questions by a, a group of people around I her. I saw that, yeah. And when they got to the point where they said about the cost of living crisis, she laughed. Oh, she did laugh? Yeah, yeah. and she I laughed. thought, you rotten thing. Because you haven't a clue. She has very wealthy parents and lives a, a very privileged life. I, I, genuinely, you have no I, I idea. genuinely feel that she has been manipulated Absolutely. her whole life. I mean, she's, uh, she hasn't had a childhood. She's, you know, she's not her own person. I'd quite like her to rebel and have a Miley Cyrus where she, you know, she <laughs> has piercings and tattoos and says climate change is a load of nonsense. That would be absolutely brilliant. But they do target the children, don't they? They do. And, and that's one of the things they did in this area. I mean, one of the shocking things that uh, I saw, and I have a photograph to prove it as well, was they did a, a protest march in Pickering and they had young children holding banners and it said, fracking poisons the earth and children. Yeah, nonsense. Absolutely. And I thought there's little kids with really sad faces, terrified of what they think is going to happen because adults are telling them. Children are like sponges. They believe what adults tell them yeah you know and the they're bringing them up now they're really quite brainwashing them in schools oh they're even putting it in the curriculum all this nonsense as well uh, i was interviewing scott benton mp and he said that a child actually said to him when he visited a school will i be old and will i live to be old enough to to have to, knit, to have a job yeah but i mean the, and, and, and we're the baddies yeah. you know we're I, the baddies i've actually seen it uh, there were some children at scarborough they were asking you know, they didn't think they they didn't think they needed to go to school because there's all these Friday strikes for school, whatever. Well, it is. How irresponsible is that? It's terrible, and they didn't know, think they needed to bother going to school because they weren't going to live long. Because also, some children think that net zero twenty fifty means that they're going to die in twenty fifty. But also, Greta Thunberg and her friends mm -hmm. came out with that you have twelve years left. How dare you know? And that and it's kids a, thought they were going to die. It's a it's a doomsday cult. It's a suicide cult as well, in the traditional sense. I mean, I'm not saying that they're telling people to take their own lives, but... but it's a religion. It, it is a... But but with none of the good bits no, of religion. No. Like, none, none of the spirituality, none of the, the love and the peace. No, just, just, the, just the bad it's, stuff. It's, yeah, it's like... Yeah. It's like um, a f quite a radical religion in the sense that you frighten people into submission. Absolutely. To obey. It's like, a, like almost medieval yes, Christianity it is. as opposed to modern, yeah. You know, I wonder when they're going to start burning us at the stake. <laughs> well, I mean, the can the cancelling and the roasting and the stuff that people get online oh, is, is, is witch hunt territory. Absolutely. absolutely. It really, really is. It really is. And you were saying that um, a lot of the people that are protesting and the people who are anti everything are very wealthy. Yes, right? they are. Usually, yeah. they're sort of they're, they're, some are professionals and and uh, you know very few. As I always used to say, you don't see the poor protesting. They're too busy trying to make ends meet. Yeah, they're, they're just too getting busy on got with to it. work. Keeping on, things. keeping on. Yeah. So I mean, I believe that this is to annihilate the middle class. That they'll be the people at the top who've always been at the top and the serfs. And that'll be it. Well, that's how what's going to happen. Yeah, how dare working class and middle class people want to drive their cars? How dare they want to jump on a plane and go on holiday? Uh, I was talking to Scott Benton MP and he said that he feels that, at least in part, the reason they haven't reopened Blackpool Airport, uh, the Labour Council, is because of net zero ideology. So Labour people, La Labour Council, are, are not allowing an airport to be reopened when loads of normal people, you know, they saved up, they did their that's holiday. Right. You know, they hate the working class, don't they? Absolutely. It isn't. Talk to us about renewables. They well, it's interesting because you get this planning application. We have that member of that family I told you about oh, who's a yeah. director with the solar farm. And he's making a few quid, I should oh, imagine. He, he intends making money. Yeah. There is also a councillor. He wasn't a councillor initially, but he set up Frat Free United. Oh, did he? Which then worked as an umbrella organisation for all the frat free groups across the country. Oh, okay. And then he became a councillor. Now, he's now a director of a company, of several companies, actually, that are into renewables. And he's wanting to put solar panels across the countryside oh, as God, well. Oh, what a coincidence. Oh, isn't that funny? Oh, isn't that strange? Yes. Yeah. So there's so much corruption going on. Oh, and, there is. Uh, and as I say, we're the ones that are portrayed as the baddies. I was lucky enough to interview uh, Francis Egan the other day. Oh, right, yeah. You know, he said that there is enough gas, if we did it properly, you know, we could be 
self-sufficient in 10, 15 years in this Yeah, country. we could have been now, couldn't we? There'd been 10 years yeah. faffing about. It's so annoying and irritating. And look at the mess we're in now. Well, Putin would not have been able to invade the Ukraine if we had been fracking 10 years ago. Yeah. But then it's quite well documented. There's lots of speculation, lots of um, articles in the media that at least in part, Russia funded the disinformation campaign surrounding fracking and some of the groups potentially as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I absolutely get, That I was in the Daily so. Mail yeah. and some other places. And I, I quite think that's true as well. And also in Europe. That you know, right, um, okay. was it Poland was wanting to start fracking, and suddenly there was all these organisations popped up to to be against very well it. funded, very well funded organisations. He's not daft, isn't Putin? No, he is. He was in the long game when he was sorting all this out. I think that you. They, yeah, absolutely, and I but I think a lot that you know a lot of the people that are making these decisions about renewables and stuff like that, the civil servants that block ministers doing anything about it in terms of energy independence, they're in it for the long game yes. as well. Lee Anderson said to me, the MP earlier, that he believes that the civil service may well be blocking our energy independence. You know, it may be them that's doing it and not the ministers. Yeah, I think that there's a lot in that because I've also heard that they're often quite uh, greenies that are in the civil service well also we they go onto the boards of these renewable companies as well it's all money it's all money Everything. what that's what I was going to say about solar you, you hear about solar farms and oh it's going to power the nation and and we will have battery back <laughs> not at the moment I can't even <laughs> see a branch or, or a twig moving or a leaf blowing <laughs> and there's not much sun is there no, coming into stop. February but they say that and um, the battery back up to back up when the solar panel stop do you know how they charge the batteries up not by solar because the national grid set up to take every bit of solar power that's produced so there isn't any spare to top the batteries up they, they buy the electricity into the batteries during the day when it, sorry during the night when it's cheap and then sell it during the day when it's dearer it's a money making racket is the batteries but how do you put the fires out when they get on fire because they do sometimes yeah like the you, cars yeah you yeah. cannot just put water on them no they have to burn themselves out i wrote they? to north yorkshire fire brigade to see what plans they had for extinguishing and what did they say? well they haven't really got any particular plans about putting it out in okay. other words it's all very vague. very and, vague and somebody said to me that you need special chemicals to put them out so that would leak into the water table wouldn't it there's no this is nothing to do with climate saving the climate or protecting it's the about environment. money it's about money and it's about control if we're all in electric cars they can be remotely disabled they've got a very short range and most people won't be able to afford them anyway it's about keeping us at home it's about power i think when the public really take on board what's yeah. happening. Heat pumps, they don't work. No, there'll be an uprising about it. Because in some of the cities, it's Oxford and places like... Oh, the 15-minute city yeah. things is disgusting. You know, people aren't going to stand for that. No. And then if you come out into rural areas and try and talk, stop us having vehicles, they're trying to take us back to when you had a horse and cat. He and said you're, you're not allowed any neighbor. land to have a horse because they, all the land has been compulsory purchased. While Matt Hancock was in the jungle eating bugs, there was a compulsory purchase of land going on, of farming land in his constituency to put solar and renewables on it. Compulsory purchase orders. That's terrible. It's absolutely horrific. Because how are we going to feed the country if they're taking all the farmland? And they'll turn around and say, oh, but it's good for biodiversity and it's good for the land. You're telling me that Mother Nature would love to be covered in plastic, steel and glass. And chemicals. And chemicals. No, Mother no, Nature would No, it's a load of nonsense, that. that. No. And farmers have been, since, since Bronze Age, started farming. Yeah. You know, and that's how you feed a nation. Oh, are we just going to import all our food as well? It's just utter lunacy i've been a big tory all my life i'll admit it mm. i'm not anymore what do you I've think just... about rishi sunak campaigning on the basis that for the leadership that he was going to bring back fracking with local consent the I'm same disgusted. as Liz trust and then as soon as he got in with his coup two days later i'm disgusted yeah the moratorium is put back in place they actually don't think about me and you and our futures and energy they don't care no. They're in a bubble down in Westminster. They have no idea the reality of trying to make ends meet. I don't think they realise how unpopular net zero is. I mean, Car26 did polling a few months ago around COP27. The first polling we did was COP26, but the second polling was a few months ago. 62%, this was a YouGov poll, of those that expressed an opinion wanted a referendum on net zero. Now, if you want a referendum, it's not because you want to keep the status quo. No, it's no. Quite. You know, so that, that's a very, very high percent. And that's with all the propaganda. 
All of the propaganda. Net zero. If we work to get to net zero by 2050... It's impossible. Will we have made any difference to the world's climate? No. 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 We don't. We produce, is it about 1% of the CO2? Yeah, the... Even if you buy into that, it's still... Nonsense. It would make no difference. It would make, make absolutely no difference. No difference it's just about making money, taxing us, controlling us. It's frightening, actually. I, I despair of it at times. I really do. So children must despair because they're having it rammed down the throats oh, all the time. Yeah. Well, my daughter tells them all at school that it's good all luck. nonsense. She's great. Yeah. She's uh, yeah. She loves you, Lola. She <laughs> does. She does. She loves you. Yeah. What's next for you, Lorraine? What's next for Lorraine Allen Allenson? I don't know. I always want to fight for freedom, actually. Freedom yeah. of speech, freedom to please ourselves, because I do feel we are losing our freedoms. Gradually, the, we are. You know, the grouping around us and crushing... Using different things. Yes. And now, the, this, now it's climate. And to me, the most important thing in your life is freedom. Because without is. freedom, you've got absolutely nothing. It's the only thing worth fighting And have for. you seen people that live in communist countries where they have no freedom? What, you mean like ours? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get miserable. Well, very, yeah, very absolutely. miserable. And they, they lose the joy of living. Well, we can ask Jeremy Hunt about that because his wife works for the Chinese Communist Party. Yeah. She does. A, she actually receives a cheque every week. She's got a programme on their really? state television. Our Chancellor. You, you couldn't joking. make it up, could no, you? No, you couldn't. You couldn't make it it's up. It's shocking what's going on. Are you happy? How do you mean, am I? Are you happy? I know that you're unhappy with what's going on in terms of freedom and everything, but are you are you are you happy that you're not being bombarded with abuse all the time, or, or do you, do you just want to keep fighting the good fight? I'd like to keep fighting the good fight, to good. be honest, for some common sense, yeah. you know, and and for some truth. They're always on about the truth. They don't know the truth at all. No. You know, they're happy for or people the to science, start. the science. The science. There's no such thing as the science. No. It, 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 the science, by its very nature, is tested and everything all the time. There's no and such all, thing. They, well, they, they just rammed sound bites. 97% of scientists agree. Well, that's you know. nonsense. And it's a nonsense. But yeah. if you notice, any of these protest organisations just stop oil and... They just say the same thing. They, they do. They've them. had the same book to read from, oh, I'll say that, you know. Yeah. And it, it, it bluffs a lot of people, perhaps, but most people, I think, are, are fed up with it all and are wanting... I, I would like a government that would run this country for the good of the country. And not for themselves. Yeah, it strikes me as they're running it for themselves in every other country, but not ours. Yeah, well, we I think, first. you know, um, Keir Starmer did a quick fire. We're going to do quick fire questions with you in a minute. But Keir Starmer did a quick fire questions in Davos, and they said Davos or Westminster. He said Davos. You're joking. Yeah. And I have so, no respect for him because he was head of the um, Crown Prosecution when all those kids in Rotherham were being abused right. and they wouldn't allow it to come out. They were frightened that it would cause racism. I'm and, sorry. And, and Labour those, would lose votes. Yeah, those yeah. children's lives are worth far more than whether it's racist or what it is. Whoever's doing the abusing no, exactly should pay the penalty. Saying. So I have no time for him whatsoever. Never vote for him. Right, no. well, thank you, Ray. That's a, a good way woman, to the good. We're not going to we're not going to mess with you. Thank you so much. But before we finish, I've got five quick fire questions for you. Okay, I've been asking everyone on my trip. Lois goes north. So, Will I need to phone a friend? <laughs> no, no, you'll be all right. I think I know what you're going to say. Actually, no. it's fun. Okay, so Lorraine, climate catastrophe or no climate catastrophe? No climate catastrophe. Fracking or no fracking? Fracking. Fracking or wind farms? Fracking. <laughs> nice juicy steak or a salad? Nice juicy steak. <laughs> all day With long. With a piece of gatto afterwards. <laughs> Hate or eat? Both. Both. It's got to be both. It's got to be both. Hasn't it? Lorraine, yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure to talk Lovely to you to today. You Thank again. you so much. Pleasure Thank to see you, you. Lois. <laughs>